Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings introduces a slew of new characters to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. With all the new faces, it's easy to miss the deeper significance of a few of them. Here are all the characters from Shang-Chi that are more than meets the eye. The Dweller in Darkness in Shang-Chi is something of a counter-dragon to the Great Protector. He has spent centuries trying to break out of the Dark Gateway and finally managed to do so after tricking Wenwu into breaking down the barrier with the Ten Rings. He proceeds to suck up the souls of many villagers and combatants before being defeated. The comic book version of the Dweller in Darkness is a frequent villain of Doctor Strange as well. He's a Cthulhu-like demon with little physical or biographical resemblance to what what we see in the Shang-Chi movie. In the film, he is actually an alien who came to Earth long ago, bringing with him others of his kind and the Ten Rings. There's also a pretty decent chance that the Dweller in Darkness is a reimagined Fin Fang Foom, a diabolical dragon from the comics and a creature that's popped up throughout the Marvel Universe. Captain Marvel's appearance in the mid credit scene is, in many ways, traditional MCU world-building. After spending almost the entire movie doing their own thing, Shang-Chi and Katie finally meet up with Wong, Bruce Banner, and Carol Danvers to discuss the rings. This is obviously the opening salvo to future Shang-Chi adventures and Avenger-style crossovers, but it's not necessarily Carol who means more than it appears, it's Brie Larson herself. Director Destin Daniel Cretton has four director credits to his name prior to Shang-Chi. Of those four, the last three just Mercy, The Glass Castle, and Short Term 12 all feature Brie Larson. He's been there for many phases of her career, with Short Term 12 often listed as her first true dramatic lead, and knew her well before she won an Oscar for Room or became Captain Marvel. That makes Shang-Chi the fourth time they've worked together, even if this particular appearance was a brief one. Villainous monster The Abomination makes a brief appearance in Shang-Chi, fighting Wong in Shaoling's fighting ring. This marks his first appearance in the MCU since The Incredible Hulk, and his chummy relationship with Wong hints that this is just the start of Abomination's new status in Marvel's shared universe. Even though he hasn't been seen on screen in more than a decade, Abomination has loomed in the background for years. In the 2011 short, The Consultant, Agent Phil Coulson said that the powers that be wanted Abomination assigned to the Avengers Initiative. Coulson was against this and sent Tony Stark to tank negotiations. Abomination was also name-dropped in an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where the audience was informed the one-time Hulk foe was still imprisoned. I'll reassign you to Barrow, Alaska, and you'll spend the rest of your years pulling the night shift guarding Blonsky's cryocell. How and why Abomination ended up friendly with Wong remains unknown. What is known is that Tim Roth is set to reprise the role of Abomination in the upcoming She-Hulk Disney Plus series. As such, this part in Shang-Chi is more than just a cameo. It's a sign of things to come. Though he's never named on screen and stays silent throughout the picture's runtime, Death Dealer looms large over the proceedings of Shang-Chi. He's present for Shang-Chi's grueling training as a child and acts as Wenwu's right-hand man later in life. He's rewarded for this loyalty by getting eaten up by a so-called soul sucker, a victim of his boss's misguided quest. Though it's barely explored on screen, Death Dealer does have a brief, albeit notable, comics history. Death Dealer was a lieutenant for Fu Manchu, Shang-Chi's father in the comics. He was brutal and willing to do anything to advance his position. Fu Manchu is the one who provided Death Dealer with the mask and weapons. Death Dealer also had an obsession with playing cards, hence the name. He came to his end just a few issues after his introduction, with Shang-Chi burning the villain alive. Though Death Dealer himself has stayed dead all these years, he did manage to leave something behind, a son. In 2009, a Shang-Chi Master of Kung Fu one-shot comic had Shang-Chi facing off against Wo Li, the junior to Death Dealer's Frank Grimes. Might we see Huo Li in future MCU adventures? Only time will tell. If you haven't read the comics or weren't paying all that close attention in the theater, the name Razor Fist should make the character in question easy to identify. A mercenary with a razor for a fist. He's hired by Wenwu to track down Shang-Chi. The two have several altercations before ultimately working together to stop the Soul Suckers. There have been three Razor Fists in the comics. The first appeared in a three-issue Master of Kung Fu arc in 1979. Unlike the movie, he had razors on each hand. He died after his brief run, meaning that he arguably got more development over the course of a two-hour movie than he ever did in the comics. I LOST MY HAND! 
The second and third Razor Fist debuted in 1981 in the form of brothers William and Douglas Scott. The two were in a car accident, with each losing an arm. The villainous Carlton Veltro gave each of the Scott brothers a sword arm and, not long after, shot and killed Douglas. Williams has since bounced around as a minor villain and henchman. It's not known which of the three possible candidates is the Razor Fist we see in the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings movie, but his survival means perhaps we could learn his true identity and backstory in some future MCU project. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.